Hey there everyone, welcome to another another Lord's more video and today I'm bringing you an attack tip video Now the reason for this video is because you know right now is that the day before KBK KBK is gonna be in about well 24 hours I believe yeah 23 hours from now and I want for you guys to be ready for you for this mainly for anyone that has hasn't had too much experience Learning the proper way to attack and by proper I mean the most efficient and safest way to attack now I do have samples to show you with everything, but first off, uh, let's talk about phalanx. Phalanx is very important when it comes to attacking. So when attacking, you want to make sure you counter whatever phalanx or whatever troop they're sending. But I want for you to pay attention to the way the game has it separated. You were able to look at the replay in the battle re in any battle report. You'll see that even though this show, uh, even though we can send five heroes, each troop type only has four squads. And this this is represented in every phalanx and every wedge. Now, the the reason to note this is because each of these is a um the way it's separated is that you can it separates your troops evenly out in between the four squads. So no matter how many troops you send, it will try its best to even uh, evenly balance it out. The only reason you won't be able to balance it out is if you send three, two, or one troops of that one troop type. Now, of course, why is this important? It's important because the way you attack is uh, can really change the outcome of how many troops you lose and how many troops you kill. Uh, what I mean by this is because in, in case you haven't heard of them, there's a tactic called um, four troop front uh, four troop meat shields. Now these meat shields take the squad attack of the enemy heroes first. Now in case you're wondering what squad attacks are, is whenever you send an army hero out. Whenever you see them in battle turn bigger, they do this squad attack, which is a 200% squad damage to the troops. So in other words, it takes 100% of the damage your troops can deal and does it in one go. Now, these are the burst of damages that you can see the, the big drops in morale. But they they pull, they make a really big uh, essence when it, when it comes to actually winning a fight or losing less troops. And the reason I mention this is because the four troop meat shield makes it that the enemy uses up their four, their four squad attacks or five, depending on they're using all five heroes in different uh, troop types. It uses all of those five, and those four meat shields, and because it's the way it targets, it's that it will target first, no matter where they are, the range will be first to be targeted, then the infantry, then the calf, and this lineup. And this other lineup will be first the it will be first the cavalry, then the range, then the infantry. So let's say here in case, as you know, range stop walking once they're in range of shooting. So once they stop walking, their their troops have to walk up to the range to know to kill the range. Doesn't matter if the infantry walk in front of it or the calf do. And I'm gonna show you that right now. Uh, so in this past uh, showdown. There was actually a matchup with me where I'm able to show this. Now we go back down to my matchup and we look at the battle report. You'll be seeing that there's a big difference in the in the losses. And uh, here's the where here's the troops. He sent um our gold heroes as well. He sent only two familiars, one of them being the calf based uh, familiar. The one that gives more attack what that stacks up as a really good war familiar, which I do not have. And he sent all tier four with no meat shields. As for me, I sent all tier I, I sent four meat shields, infantry, four meat shields, cavalry, and all tier four. Of course, I do have more familiars, but they're not as strong as a stacking attack damage familiar. Now, the phalanx wise, he won calf wedge, which puts his calf up front, while I went range phalanx, which puts my calf on the way on the very back. And the way this plays a big role is that as you can see. Uh, right off the bat, the familiar uh, uh, force proc. But if you pay attention, my range have stopped walking. And because I put a uh, bombing goblin as another hero because of the army attacks that, that it gets to the squads, uh, it, it, you can already see its, move, its attack. And now you see my infantry right here have already crossed the, the front line and so I have my calf. But their calf is not targeting the infantry. As you can see right now, you can see the squads are being eliminated because each one's troop is one of my squads for infantry and range. So we continue. 
and you can see right here the first thing they annihilated wait uh here can a near squad annihilate it that is a one troop uh squad that got annihilated but as you can see the enemy used their hero squad attacks on that while my heroes use their, their squad attacks on their calf because they have no meat shields and you can see the big damage difference they i've only lost two troops right here as you can see in the bottom but they he has already lost over forty thousand troops well about forty thousand troops and that's because they he's only attacked the meat shield so far so we keep going as you can see right here now we see uh heroic fighters wait heroic fighters yeah heroic fighters now being the ones to be eliminated and that's where the other troops went down while my squads have been have been able to land another hit on him losing a losing a total of now fifty thousand troops by the time and i've only lost a total of five troops so if it continues he has another squad to a hit and but his thing his familiar procs and now he finally started hitting my troops but by that time he already had already lost a lot of troops he, he was already 70,000 below so he does do more damage to me because of his familiar so i'm losing more off faster than he is but he has already dropped a lot of troops by this point because his squad attacks have been wasted on the four troop meat shields and i don't need to keep showing you because here's a battle report that comes out of it and the whole battle being cav against calf difference only being four meat shields and lost 96,000 troops while he lost 194,000 troops in that battle. Now, sure, you can say the familiars make, make a big difference, which they really do. But he did have a stacking damage familiar in there. But the damage is still way too much of a difference for it being only on the familiars. Now, that's the reason the four meat shields uh, are very important. And the way you see what meat shields you send is depending on what you're going to attack with. And what what you think the front the front line is? So you're attacking the your enemy with a it, with a full cavalry march. As you saw, I was I was just range fans because it puts a cavalry all the way to the very back. This means that they first have to attack your range, then they attack your infantry, and then they attack excuse me your calf. And then you're going for range uh, for a range march. You can go either infantry phalanx or cavalry phalanx, but this has a really big dependency on what you're attacking. Now, this is a more advanced usage for this phalanx, but let me go first on the infantry phalanx for range. For range march, infantry phalanx, of course, they first have to they first have to waste other things on their on your infantry, which are only going to be four troops. Then they have to wait on the next volley of attacks to take out the four cavalry. During that time, you already had two volleys of your range hit them. Now, the reason you will want to wait on to, to use this one is I'm going to use this on dark nests that have only cavalry, cav, cavalry left or they have calf on the very front. And the reason for this is because of walk time. Whenever you attack with range and only range and there's no melee troops being infantry or calf, the enemy troop arm the ar enemy armies walk out of out of the castle and into infantry phalanx no matter what the thing is infantry phalanx counter range so you don't want to ever be able to fight that if he has infantry left but if he has a calf range only left you can draw the cat the cavalry by breaking the wall oh no by not breaking the wall without having t uh many troops but if you if you know that he only has calf or the calf is front line uh, you can break the wall by having this comp this matchup because the the targets will first hit your range allowing your infantry to live up to the t up to the point that you break the wall and then once they break the wall the cavalry is going to be walking from the very back all the way to towards your infantry and during that time your range is going to keep attacking while on the other way your their cavalry will be will come out right here at the very front and they start marching this distance instead of from here to here now if you're sending infantry infantry is one of the one of the only troops i would not recommend using this kind of tactic with the reason for it is because of this starting off well it's actually a very big coin flip but this this is my reasoning for it infantry are the second slowest troops next to siege and if they're the slowest troops that means they're going to take longer to walk the same di to walk this whole distance and cavalry walk up very fast so when attacking the calf will walk up they'll get destroyed then the cav your range will be attacked and by the time the range get attacked your infantry will barely be getting to the battle 
and because infantry are ready to get into the battle you don't get the advantage you don't get too much of the advantage the only advantage you will get is that the first hit you receive will not be with a squad attack but you won't be able to get those extra hits in there so it really depends what you're fighting with this but I will, for infantry i would more than likely recommend going infantry phalanx or into infantry wedge without the four meat shields all right let me cover wedges now the reason i didn't uh, mention wedges because you can use this tactic on wedges too which is a lot better now the reason it's better on, on wedges is because as you see on failings this is one row two rows three rows that means you have to do three volleys to break into your back lane and failings is even better because they have one row two rows three rows four rows so they have an extra row they have to attack before they can touch your your range the reason i don't attack too many too much with them or reason i haven't unlocked them well, actually, I haven't unlocked it because I haven't gone around the tree, but uh, the reason to use these uh, is mainly for defending when you're offline. Now, the reason you want to defend when you're offline like this is because it will take the... The the attackers will be hitting two troop types and they won't be able to one troop blast you too easily without without them taking too much... Without them having to do more rallies on you. Alright, next up is heroes. Now, you, did, you do remember me mentioning squad attacks. So, each hero... Well, each squad attack. No, 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 I'm not gonna change heroes. Uh, that's not what I want either. I think I have it here. Command center, yeah. So, each one of these that I have in battalions are set up to have one. I haven't updated that one. Is 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 meant to have each um each troop type of hero. Now, when you click heroes, you can see what troop type they help. But of course, you wanna also make sure you, you they give you good stats. Like right here, we have max HP, army HP, infantry attack. You want to focus attack and HP over defense. And what I mean by over defense is like right here, um, Shade is an infantry hero, yes. He does have a good squad attack, which is the golden squad attack of every hero. The thing is, he only gives defense for infantry, which is not a something you want to give to that squad. And of course, you want to set him up. As you can see, I have right here only all infantry because I do not like the four me shield on this. For the range, right here you can see I do have the, the, the 4 and 4 set up. I have all range heroes with one army. So I did mention there's only 4 squad, uh, squads. So you can only use 4 squad attacks. But whenever this stat procs in. So right here you see like is the range 50%, 50 and 30% attack. This only applies to the squad the hero is in. So you send 5 range heroes that do not have an army stat. So let's say the other range hero you send would be like uh like trickster even though trickster gives no stats so this doesn't really matter but his squad attack will not be used which also because the fifth hero means that there's one hero that that doesn't have a squad to command so there's no squad attack that he can do so his stats will also not be affecting the battle because there's no it only it only applies to that squad in comparison army stats apply to all the squads that you send so you can send a full army march. That's even better, but you need for you for you to be able to use all squad attacks because the squad attacks is what makes a big what makes a big deal breaker on battles. Now you want to send four uh, focused squad attacks. So four focused heroes. In my case, we have right here a uh, tricks uh trickster track. We have tracker. We have um what's her name death archer. We have ice queen and we have black crow. These are the four squad uh, focused heroes. And then right here, you see Bombing Goblin. Though he is a ranged hero, I do not have him there for the squad attack. I, ha I have him there because he gives army attack. So he gives an extra 20% stats to all those four squads if I send a full range march, which is what this would be. And and the four, the four meets just so I can, so I take less damage and I am able to do more damage faster. Um, I don't have anything for Cav yet, but that's pretty much it. That's all you. Um, that's how I. That's how my tips for battle. You all, as always, you do want to be able to attack. So you, when you have a scout, you do not have a scout. Up, I wouldn't attack, depending on their might and the big and depending on their guild. Reason being is there's too many garrison traps out there, and they can use very small accounts. 
they have anti and you march on it thinking like oh it's a small account it has anti it won't do anything but then you see his guild and he has like 1 billion players in war gear that and they could have well, garrison the that castle that you've seen before you even landed there and they might just be able to cap all your troops and you'll be like what happened there and you would never know because you wouldn't get a report so i wouldn't recommend attacking without anti-scouts uh, watching out for griffin traps the way to watch out for griffin traps is if the castle has a lot of resources and it's in an island 90 percent of the time it is a griffin trap you also got to make sure there's other guilds around it but pretty much if it's in an island with a lot of resources is most likely a griffin trap next i would recommend having built a lot of tier 2 tier 2 are very good for rally traps or to eat rallies because they cushion the your losses and also they're easier to rebuild but if once you have enough tier tier 2 i would recommend attacking for looting for resources with tier 2 only in case there happens to be a trap someone garrison the, the garrisons the castle there is some sort of griffin trap in there this happens to be a solo trap a your tier 2 if you happen to be eaten your tier 2 will take four times less time to to rebuild than it would take on a on regular troop on a regular tier 4 or tier 3 so as you can see right now with with a talent it takes me one day to train up a 12,000 batch tier 2 which means it will take me two days for tier 3 or two, two days and then a little bit extra time and which will mean it will take me four days for tier 4 with an extra hour so it's about the training speed and so rebuild speed so whatever your tier 1 takes it takes twice as long because this would be 12 hours yeah it'll take twice as long and a little bit more for your tier 2 and then it will take twice as long as your tier 2 for your tier 3 and twice as long for your tier 3 to your tier 4 so it goes from like 12 hours all the way to 24 right here and then it goes back up to uh 48 and then it goes all the way to uh what is that 96 106 96 and yeah, 96 hours so it doubles as you keep going so you i I would rather lose tier two rather than tier four and when I'm marching uh to get resources in case I get trapped this will take me four times as, uh, less time to rebuild this as well as being a lot more resource uh, friendly to rebuild than it is to be rebuild tier four and it also goes to tier three resource wise to rebuild just one of these you're looking at with max subsidies looking at low uh sixty each while we're looking right here for the for here we're 105 and his at almost max subsidies so we're looking at a good um 100 almost 100 percent around 80 percent increase in cost from your tier 2 to tier 4 uh from tier 2 to tier 3 but that's pretty much it for this video i hope you find it helpful i hope you don't get capped using these tips i hope you stay safe i hope you can actually you know kill some good troops out there but i hope that's it and catch you on the next one peace oh in case you guys happen to know other tips that i did not mention um for in case i missed them you know leave them in the comments i really like to learn, know it because it's never too late to keep learning more stuff in the game you know and there's even big players that still are learning as as time goes on because there's updates that come out that change the game very so slightly and there's also new matters that come out so it's like griffin trap wasn't thought of until and wasn't popular either until a couple months ago no actually now it's a year until a year ago and now garrison traps have become a lot more prominent again because for some reason even though they had been they were very popular then they died out at least i hadn't seen any for a good year and they, they're very popular now. I've already ran into six of them in the past five weeks, I think. But yes, I hope you found this information helpful. I hope it helps you out. I hope you can do a lot more damage. I hope you save your troops. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.